Good morning. It is May Wednesday, May 22nd at 9 19 AM. The county council is meeting for the purpose of a clean water rate study. With that said, we will hand it over to staff to present the clean water rate study information. I'm sorry. I need a picture. Good. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Um, good morning, Council. Uh, for the record, my name is Devin Rostfer, and I'm proud to be here today representing the Clean Water Division and Public Works. I'm also joined by my Clean Water colleagues, Andrea Logue and Jeff Schnabel, who will be co-presenting with me today to provide you with an update on the Clean Water Division's rate study. The Clean Water Division has been working incredibly hard to take a close look at our current services that our division provides by essentially completing a program evaluation or an audit of our current programs to identify not only what we are doing well, but more importantly to identify where our program is facing challenges, shortfalls, unmet needs, and compliance risks uh, with the goal that by identifying these gaps, our division can request council support to help improve the clean water services we provide to ratepayers in Clark County. Next slide. So for today's work session, we'll start with a short clean water rate study recap to review how the clean water program calculates its stormwater rates. Then we'll transition into an overview of our division's estimated funding gaps for 2025 to 2029, where our cost to provide services is estimated to be greater than the revenues our program is currently generating. We will then present these funding gaps as three different packages for services that we have determined are mandatory to remain in compliance with our municipal stormwater permit. And we will also present council with cost estimates for a package of our recommended services that aren't required by the stormwater permit, but are those proactive services our program needs to implement to address challenges with aging infrastructure, such as uh, a pipe inspection and maintenance program. We will then wrap up with cost estimates for a package of additional services that focus more on watershed health by increasing the number and types of stormwater projects that our program is able to implement. And finally, we will end with a review of our rate study milestones and next steps. And at this time, I will now hand it over to Andrea Logue to provide an overview of how the Clean Water Division is funded. Andrea? Thank you, Devin, and good morning, Council. Uh, for the record, my name is Andrea Logue, and I'm Senior Management Analyst um, working with the Clean Water Division. So uh, Clean Water Fund 4420 is separate from the general fund, and it finances the operations, maintenance, and capital improvements of Clark County stormwater facilities. So it's an enterprise fund, which is to account for business type activities where all or part of the costs of activities are supported by fees and charges paid directly by those who benefit from the activities. Cost recovery is the goal. For 2023, just under 80,000 properties were billed, the clean water fee, and this is an incremental three tenths of a percent increase in the number of properties billed when compared with 2022. Approximately 7.6 million in fee revenue was collected in 2023. Next slide, please. So clean water fees are calculated based on the rate structure, which is each rate and how that rate is applied to different land uses in the urban and rural areas of unincorporated Clark County. Single family residential lots are charged a flat fee for the year. So then that's $47 in the urban area and $35 in the rural area. The stormwater rate is the per unit cost for stormwater management. And the base unit is an average of impervious surface area on urban single family residential lots, equating to 3,500 square feet. 
It is used in the fee calculation of non-residential properties, dividing a property's total impervious area by 3,500 square feet to result in units that are equivalent to residential units. These base units are then multiplied by the respective rate, $47 in the urban area and $35 in the rural area. In summary, the clean water fee is calculated by taking into consideration land use designation, location in the urban or rural area, the stormwater rate, and the base unit. Next slide, please. So on this slide, we see a table of the current rate structure. The land use of a property determines the assessment methodology. There are four calculation methods based on land use categories as listed on the left side column. One, the first one is single family residential lots up to half an acre that are charged a flat rate regardless of measured on-site impervious surface. The second category is single family residential large lots that are also charged a flat rate, but the rates incrementally decrease as the lots increase in acreage. The third is multifamily residential lots that are charged a rate per residential unit. And the fourth are non-residential properties that are charged a rate per number of base units, as we discussed on the previous slide. Next slide, please. So the treasurer's office bills and collects the clean water fees via the property tax statements with payment due April and October of each year. There are currently several options to make billing and or collecting clean water fees more equitable. Bills over $50 can be paid in two increments. Exemptions for seniors, senior citizens, and people with disabilities. And hardship mobile homes are not billed. Next slide, please. Why conduct a rate study now? The Clean Water Fund's current cash balance is $13.8 million. 13 .8 million. This is cash available to spend on services. However, the fund is in a structural deficit, which means persistent year-over-year -year spending is more than revenues received. And that means that the projected fund balance, this cash available, is diminishing over the next five years and is estimated to decrease to a little over 600,000 by 2029. Stormwater fee rates were last increased in 2015, and that was the only increase since 2000 when the stormwater fee rates were first assessed. Next slide, please. In this chart is infrastructure replacement value changes from 2018 to, 2000, to 2024. Um, the value of stormwater assets the Clean Water Division is responsible for have increased 47% over these six years. The calculation method is twofold. Update to the current year, the count of assets or pieces, and an update to the current year of the unit cost for each of these pieces or assets. Next slide, please. Uh, we also, clean water staff have been working with, uh, working on a draft fund balance policy. Uh, we've been working with public works finance staff and the next step is review by the countywide finance team. And we're aiming for approval, hopefully before the rate adoption hearing in August. Uh, just a quick overview of uh, the components of our fund balance, uh, a draft fund balance policy. We have operating reserve equal to six weeks of budgeted operating expenses to provide cash flow to cover short-term short revenue shortfalls. Uh, the second is capital reserve, which would be equivalent to the greater of 750,000 or 5% of the expense budget in the adopted six-year stormwater capital plan. Uh, we have an, proposed an emergency capital repair reserve of 20% of annual facilities maintenance and operations budget. And this would provide funds in the event of major unplanned expenditures 
based on historic emergency repair data. We are also proposing the debt service reserve, which would be equivalent to the current year of annual debt service payments. I do want to say, though, that Clean Water Division does not currently have debt service obligations. However, the division has in the past entered into debt agreements, and there is potential for the future. So it seems prudent to include a debt service reserve in our fund balance policy. Uh, we also are proposing a reimbursement expenditures reserve of 10% of the combination of grant and reimbursal, reimbursable revenue in the current in the current annual year budget. And now, uh, if, next slide, please, and uh, I will turn it back over to Devin. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea, for that comprehensive overview and reminder. Um, some additional reminders on where we are at currently in the rate study. As Council may recall, in January of 2024, the Clean Water Division kicked off this rate study. And in February, we established an internal core team made up of representatives from Public Works and the County Finance team. We also conducted cross-department interviews to understand the programmatic needs of other divisions and departments that rely on clean water funding to provide services such as roads and operations, engineering and construction, parks, as well as community development. In March, our team began identifying our division service gaps and estimating our funding needs. Next slide. And most recently on April 24th, we were just here um, and we had a work session with council to provide a summary overview of some of the service gaps we've identified, including results from a public survey we completed this spring on what clean water services are most important to people in Clark County. Additionally, we had a discussion with council about what clean water services are most important to you. Next slide. And what we heard from Council is that there seems to be general interest in supporting clean water programs that help address issues with aging infrastructure, particularly implementing a new pipe asset management program for inspections and maintenance of underground infrastructure. We also heard an interest in addressing failing stormwater facilities, such as bioretention, and increasing our division's ability to implement construction stormwater requirements, including efforts to increase enforcement. And finally, we heard council talk about the need to plan for growth, as well as continued interest in lake management investments. Next slide. In addition to hearing from council, we heard from the public that 84% of survey respondents believe that the county's ability to provide clean water services need improvement, and our team agrees. Now I'm gonna to transition to a quick overview of the six programs that the Clean Water Division provides um, necessary to be in compliance with our county municipal stormwater permit. These include our capital facilities program, which is focused on implementing new stormwater construction projects through our six year capital plan to retrofit impervious areas that have no stormwater treatment. Um, we also have our public facilities maintenance and operations program, which focuses on implementing required maintenance of existing infrastructure. Additionally, we have a monitoring and assessment program that collects all of the data on water quality conditions. And we have a stormwater planning and coordination program, which implements required private stormwater facility inspections and technical assistance, as well as business pollution source control and other required stormwater planning activities. We also have a public information and outreach program. And finally, we have a clean water administration program, which includes various services such as lake management and other activities. Within these six programs, the Clean Water Division has identified 65 service gaps where our program currently does not have the resources needed to implement mandated, recommended, and additional services. Of these 65 service gaps, our facilities maintenance and operations program has the greatest needs with 22 service gaps identified, followed by our capital facilities program where we've identified 17 service gaps. Next slide. Um, now I'm gonna transition into providing an overview of the funding needed to address these 65 service gaps identified by Clean Water. 
So based on robust analysis completed since January up until now, the Clean Water Division has identified a funding gap of approximately $50.2 million for services that our program would like to implement over the next five years between 2025 to 2029. Of this $50.2 million funding gap, 74% of our total shortfall is attributed to our two infrastructure programs, including maintenance and operation services to take care of existing infrastructure and our capital facilities program necessary to construct new infrastructure in areas without stormwater detention or water quality treatment. Next slide. Um, Clean Water anticipates that this funding gap does increase each year, starting in 2025, and the total cumulative funding gap from years 25, 26 through 2029 is how we determined our total funding gap of $50.2 million over the next five years. Now, um, we will take a look at funding shortfalls within each of our six programs um, by breaking down our funding needs for the mandated versus recommended versus additional services. So as you may recall from previous work sessions, Clean Water presented three different categories or buckets for how we can package the different services that our programs provide. The top priority is addressing the mandated services, which are the required services necessary for compliance with the Washington State Stormwater Permit and the Federal Clean Water Act. Our division considers these mandated services our base level of service that our division must provide and not providing these services comes with significant non-compliance risks. Our second bucket of services are the recommended services, which are the proactive services that are necessary to prevent infrastructure failure and to help extend the useful life and functionality of our county infrastructure. And by implementing these services, the county can reduce risk to public health and safety that can be caused by emergency failures. And proactive maintenance can also help the county avoid future issues with noncompliance. Um, and finally, there is the additional bucket of services, which are those leading practices, mm -hmm. such as our um, nature-based solutions, including wetland and floodplain restoration and reforestation, which are, will help restore watershed health and achieve important water quality and salmon recovery goals. So going back to the 65 service gaps total that we identified, of these 65 service gaps, the Clean Water Division has identified 30 of these services as mandatory, required services that we have to provide to remain in compliance with state and federal law. 23 of the service gaps are recommended and 12 of the services we've identified as additional. So in total, um, within the $50.2 million shortage over the next five years, our team estimates that it will cost $23.6 million to implement the mandated baseline services necessary. Recommended services will cost approximately $20.8 million between 2025 to 2029, and we have identified almost $6 million worth of additional services. Next slide. I know we have stated this multiple times already throughout the presentation, but choosing not to address the risks and shortfalls we currently have um, within our mandated service area can result in enforcement by Department of Ecology or EPA, monetary fines, or third-party litigation under the Clean Water Act, which our program has experienced previously. Now I'm going to hand it over to Jeff Schnabel to provide a summary of what new services clean water will provide depending on council's decision to either support implementation of mandated services only, mandated services and recommended services versus the progress our division could make with support to implement all of the service gaps that we've identified. Jeff? Thanks, Devin. <clears throat> Uh, good morning, Council. For the record, uh, my name is Jeff Schnabel. I am the Stormwater Infrastructure Manager with the Clean Water Division. Good to see you all. Um, 
what I'm going to do is start with kind of an overview, some of the mandated service gaps uh, that the Clean Water Division has identified, which again, these are the required services the program must provide in order to be in compliance with our stormwater permit. That's the municipal stormwater permit from the state. The team estimates that to provide this package of services, as Devin mentioned, it'll cost approximately $23.5 million over the next five years. And again, a reminder, this is spending above our projected current budget levels. Those dollars will support major improvements to certain programs, including capital facilities programming to help our team address issues with infrastructure that we know is currently not performing to, to the level that we need. We also intend to use the funding to implement major repair and replacement projects of our large uh, group of infrastructure assets and to address mapping and inventory needs for our new infrastructure that the division is required to track and inspect. So this uh, mapping work, inventory work is the, is the uh, critical link that allows us to do all of our inspection and maintenance work and stay in compliance. Next slide, please. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, we'll stay there. <laughs> Thank you. So on the maintenance and operations side, second part of this slide, uh, that's where we have our biggest funding gaps to support mandated services that will enable Clean Water Division to implement new street sweeping requirements, which we expect to ramp up in 2027. Uh, that element alone is expected to have a significant impact on budget, up to a million dollars of additional spending per year uh, to meet that permit requirement beginning in 2027. We also plan to begin restoring approximately 500 stormwater ponds uh, that the county owns in order to make sure they have enough detention capacity to maintain uh, compliance with the volume of stormwater they manage. Uh, for reference, uh, what we've included in this cost estimate is enough funding to address approximately 10 of those 500 facilities annually going forward. So a small percentage starting with the worst moving on through over time. Uh, some of that kind of long-term asset management work that we've talked about ramping up. Um, the program plans to begin conducting routine pervious sidewalk maintenance, which is a service we do not currently provide, and we are planning to ramp up our construction stormwater inspections and stormwater warranty inspections, uh, which is technical assistance to help ensure that better stormwater infrastructure is being built by the private development community and turned over to Clark County. Now we can go to the next slide. Thank you. So additional mandated services the team plans to provide include a required update to the Clark County Stormwater Code and Manual and completion of a required engineering study called the Stormwater Management Action Plan. We also have a requirement to provide mandatory stormwater training for all the county's technical staff to make sure they are up to speed on modern stormwater design requirements. Furthermore, the county has a requirement to map all tree canopy and establish goals and policies for protecting and restoring that tree canopy. We also intend to provide more pollution source control for businesses and more private stormwater facility technical assistance. As with the public facilities, private facilities are increasing at approximately 8% in number per year. On the monitoring side, uh, our team plans to continue with the resources that we have uh, for our team for monitoring and data collection, which we provide both for internal use of the county and also for other municipalities within Clark County and the state of Washington. And finally, in the education outreach section, our team is looking to add education outreach support to increase attendance at events and our ability to coordinate volunteers and have better direct engagement with the community. Next slide, please. So from here, we'll, we'll jump into the recommended level of service. So these are additional uh, services, again, beyond those mandated as Devin was explaining. So uh, again, going through the six program areas, starting with capital facilities, one of our uh, Priorities will be to develop a 20-year capital plan. You, know, you are well aware of the six-year stormwater capital plan that we come to you for adoption uh, every year. Uh, a 20-year capital plan is something that would allow us to begin routinely accessing additional funding through the REIT II program, real estate excise tax dollars, uh, that we could then use to help fund some of our um, ongoing capital needs that we do not currently do. Uh, phosphorus removal uh, cartridges would be great. Uh, we'd love to be able to upgrade our treatment facilities, especially in lakes that are in watersheds that drain to lakes uh, and 
put in the newest technology in order to uh, maximize our treatment. Uh, we've talked a little bit about repair of aging pipe infrastructure. Uh, that, of course, is, is an ongoing need that has not been addressed in the past. Again, not a permit requirement, but something that we feel is an important uh, proactive approach to managing our infrastructure going forward. Uh, the dollars that we have allocated within this uh, proposal would allow us to address approximately 2% of our inventory of pipe miles annually, beginning in about 2028. Uh, so a, a way to get our foot in the door and, and move forward. Um, we have some failing underground injection control wells and facilities that we would also like to address, as well as uh, additional stormwater engineering resources that would help us to um, ramp up our, our performance. And in maintenance and operations, obviously the pipe inspection program, program goes hand in hand with the repair of the pipe infrastructure. So we have allocated uh, some recommended dollars for ramping up an inspection program for our pipe system uh, to go through and systematically determine where we have high priority pipes that are in need of repair. That kind of goes hand in hand as well with our asset management program for all of our aging infrastructure. Uh, we'd like to be developing a little bit more robust and a little bit more proactive approach to not just the pipes, but also to some of our ongoing treatment and, and flow control infrastructure that uh, we need to be kind of keeping up with as well. Uh, some improvements to our inventory work by utilizing uh, photography to capture our conditions. We do not currently uh, inspect or proactively maintain our 1,600 county dry wells. Uh, we write routinely um, maintain those when there are complaints or flooding issues. Uh, we'd love to see that become more of a, of a routine uh, element, uh, as well as uh, providing some maintenance for those properties that clean, that clean Water owns that are not specifically used for clean water treatment or flow control. They are additional properties that were, that were donated to the county by development over the years. Um, we are owners of those properties, but we don't have any dedicated funding to really help uh, maintain those from the vegetation standpoint or things like that. Um, and finally, pervious roadway maintenance. We'd like to be moving above the, the current level of basic compliance that we have. Uh, the more maintenance we can do on those surfaces, the more likely we are to be able to extend their life uh, and kind of decrease our costs going forward. Next slide, please. So continuing with the recommended with the stormwater planning and coordination, uh, we see some needs in the code enforcement area as well as uh, an increasing need to respond to environmental complaints. Uh, they seem to just uh, continually increase over the years, um, kind of strapping our resources there. So we'd love to be able to be a little more proactive on that element, uh, as well as additional stormwater planning expertise and the ability to um, take the next step in some of our planning activities. Education and outreach, um, we have a lot of educational and opportun uh, outreach opportunities out there that we are not currently, um, we don't have the capacity to take advantage of. So we'd love to be able to uh, increase that opportunity, uh, possibly even tripling the amount of uh, um, outreach activities and, and contact with the public that we, that we manage to have. And then as uh, Devin mentioned under the administration, um, we have some uh, interest, I think, both on the council and in the public for some dedicated work on lakes, both within the treatment arena and also kind of the planning and coordination arena with our partner agencies. And then the last one there, um, we believe that there's a lot of grant revenue that we're leaving on the table due to lack of capacity to be, to be actively applying for, proposing, and, and uh, managing grants. Uh, particularly for capital programming, but also for some of our monitoring and other work that we do, education and outreach. Um, we think that we could potentially triple our grant revenue over time by um, upping our capacity to deal with grants and, and reach out in those, in those funding arenas. Next slide, please. Okay, so now we're on to the additional services, and this is uh, that third category of kind of the um, highest level of service that we could that we could try to provide, uh, and there are a few things in each of our program areas where we think we could take advantage of those. Uh, under capital facilities, we have advanced wetland mitigation site planning for public works projects. Um, this is a a way that we can make more efficient our mitigation planning and needs for both 
clean water projects as well as things like parks projects and occasionally roads projects uh, by forward loading and front loading our mitigation by building a mitigation site specifically for upcoming projects as a group. Uh, it makes it a little more efficient. We don't have to do our mitigating project by project by project. Uh, this is a, a capacity that clean water helped to build uh, many years ago. That capacity has now been exhausted, uh, needing a new uh, site essentially to re-up that if we want to go in that direction. Again, not a required thing, but one of those things that's an investment that can save some dollars down the road. Um, expanded watershed retrofits. Uh, these are projects that we would do for retrofitting systems, building new systems, wetland and, and uh, habitat restoration, those types of things that would be over and above uh, the minimum required to meet our permit capital work. So we have sufficient funding right now to meet our permit requirements. We've included funding in this additional services category to provide approximately one additional project per year uh, to additionally address watershed needs uh, as we find them. Development of large-scale neighborhood drainage and flooding improvements and development of large-scale stormwater projects in collaboration with county roads and parks. Uh, these, are, these are funded here as additional services, primarily as seed money. These are very expensive projects. Uh, there's some benefits and some leveraging that we gain from them. However, what we've included in this rate study is simply enough money to begin planning and a little design to explore these possibilities. So the implementation phase, the construction of larger projects like this is not contemplated within this planning horizon. So it's something for, for council to just kind of keep in mind as you're looking forward. And then also some dedicated resources for nature-based solutions. We heard this uh, loud and clear from the public in the, in the survey that we did a while back. Um, wetland restoration, reforestation, those types of natural solutions to our, some of our stormwater problems are a uh, public priority. And so uh, there is an option of, of kind of moving in that direction as well. And maintenance and operations. Um, we have noxious weed management that takes place on all of our county-owned properties. We could see uh, a need or a desire to increase those resources and that capacity to deal with vegetation issues as we you know, uh, continue to acquire more properties and more, uh, more assets that need maintenance. But again, not, not a required um, level of service there. This is all additional. Next slide, please. Under the stormwater planning and coordination, um, we'd like to see, or we could see, a dedicated watershed planner uh, as we work more closely with things like the new interlocal agreement that the county has with the city of Camas, or work out in Vancouver Lake, various other things with our partners, um, conservation district folks, TMDLs, uh, water cleanup plans through ecology, um, basically resources to dedicate to making the most out of those relationships, helping us to plan our activities in a way that leverages off of those other things that others are doing. Uh, education and outreach, um, I mentioned before, there's, there's almost a never ending opportunity out there for additional public in, involvement for clean water projects and outreach. Um, and then administratively, um, dedicated resources that would help us to uh, meet some of the county's goals for environmental justice and equity, uh, just bringing those pieces more to the forefront of our operations and helping them uh, go forward in the community. Okay, that's the, that's the three categories. So just as kind of a quick recap, uh, if we were to go with all of those things at the levels that we have, that we have presented as far as costing, um, you'd be looking at about $10 million more per year uh, for the highest level of service with all three categories mandated, recommended, and additional services. So that would be to address kind of all of those 65 service gaps that Devin mentioned. Um, and next slide, please. So as a quick reminder, the goal uh, here is we, we're playing a little bit of catch up on some things, but primarily looking at maintaining our level of service as we have more and more uh, needs and requirements in the new permit cycle and with additional infrastructure uh, that we inherit. Um, so provide high quality clean water services to our public and achieve cost recovery for the services that we provide, uh, whatever range of, of services uh, council eventually decides is, is the appropriate level. So uh, appreciate your time. And I think this is where I turn it back over to Devin. 
Thank you so much, Jeff, and, and thank you, Council, um, for the time today. Um, with that overview, I, I hope that um, the Council and ratepayers um, have a better understanding of the clean water services that could be provided um, with a potential rate increase. And I hope that some of those services that we've at least presented to you today get you excited and hopeful for the future potential of our program um, if we are able to make rate adjustments. Next slide. So at this time, you know, why are we here today? Um, it's really to get a sense from council on, on where you're leaning. If, if the council is interested in supporting our division to address all of the service gaps versus just the mandated and recommended service gaps, or just the mandated service gaps. And um, at this time, Clean Water's priority request to Council would be to consider supporting our division to address all mandated, recommended, and additional service gaps to provide the highest level of service possible to Clark County ratepayers, um, to keep us in compliance with state and federal uh, clean water laws, but also to help us move forward on proactively managing and addressing our aging infrastructure challenges and moving us forward to improve watershed health through increased project delivery. So this would be our priority request um, to you today. Next slide. Oh, I think we might be missing one. So if council is not able to support the Clean Water Division in addressing all service gaps at this time, our request uh, minimally would be that council would consider supporting us to address the mandated services and the recommended services. And if not all the recommended services, at least some of them, um, to not only keep us in compliance, um, but to help us avoid issues with future noncompliance that could come if we continue to defer maintenance, which increases the likelihood of infrastructure failure, which can often result in, in higher, more costly emergency repairs. Um, and I don't think we're asking for a formal vote today um, but it would, I would be thankful to hear a bit more about where you're at on um, which services you're comfortable and interested in supporting um, when we get to discussion. Next slide. So just to let you know where we're going, we do have a, a work session scheduled with you on June 26th. And this is when we plan to, based on what we hear from you today and what services you're interested in, we plan to go back to the drawing board and, and present to you what does that mean for rate payers? What would the draft rates be for if we only provided mandated services, if we provided mandated and recommended versus all the service gaps? Um, so that is our goal, is to bring those draft rates to you on June 26th. And we also um, have included some time for, to discuss some different rate structure policy options for how we could, could adjust how we calculate rates for single family residential homes or um, how we calculate our base units, which would have more impacts on businesses and roads and, and how that could result in changes to our ability to collect revenue. And uh, additionally, um, the Clean Water Division has scheduled some public information sessions um, to start sharing our, our potential rate increases with, um, with the rate payers in July, uh, contingent on council support, of course. Um, we also have a council and Clean Water Commission bus tour planned for July 30th to um, take you out and show you some of our projects. We have some really fun things. We, we plan to take you to a wetland restoration. We wanna feature our maintenance and operations work as well as some of our um, stormwater facilities, our monitoring team. Um, we'll, we'll take us down to the river and we'll get to collect some samples and then um, hoping to wrap up the day at Vancouver Lake. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. There'll be um, trivia on the bus. So I hope that you can make it to join us that day um, to learn a bit more about us and, and get to know each other. Um, if needed, there's the potential we could have another work session in July or August. We haven't scheduled that, but our, we currently are penciled in for a rate adoption hearing on August 27th. Um, that, you know, depending on where we get, if more information is needed, um, we could potentially adjust that date, but I know um, Kristen has, has tent and Rebecca have tentatively marked that date for us to come to council for a potential rate adjustment. Um, if we are making a rate adjustment, uh, new fees would be calculated in October. 
and ultimately implemented in February of 2025. And to operationalize any new services, that would happen through the budget adopt process in December, just so you kind of know what it looks like to actually implement, um, the, uh, implement the outcomes of the rate study. So um, I wanted to wrap up just by saying thank you from Clean Water. This is a recent photo of our team. We had an all staff public works meeting um, focused on safety out at the Clark County Event Center. And um, this is us. We are, um, I, I am very thankful for the team we have. These are the faces protecting and restoring clean water in Clark County. So thank you for your time and consideration. And at this time, we'll take questions, feedback, comments, reactions, discussion. Thank you again. Thank you, Devin. Just to clarify um, what something that you touched on a little earlier, this yeah. is a work session only. We are not making any decisions Correct. or voting on anything at this time. So I just wanted to put that out Correct. there. We are not voting on anything. Um, on Thank that, you. is there any questions from the council? I have a couple of, I don't know if I have questions or comments. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say I'm kind of blown away by this presentation. I know you had requested some consulting assistance to uh, develop a request to increase the rate and to do a study. So uh, we didn't uh, we didn't get that for you, but you've done a remarkable job. So I know it's had an impact on everybody's work schedule. So thank you all for that work. Um, I, uh, I'm excited about this. I think that, you know, looking at the three components that you laid out, I think it really is, uh, I think those additional services, uh, more than anything really, uh, is the um, most important area in terms of leveraging additional resources and building partnerships. So I'm excited about that aspect of the uh, program, and I think that we really, really have to we have to monitor and take care of our assets. You know, it's just uh, it's going to just cost the county so much more if we're not in a proactive stance to do that. And I know that the department has done the very best they can with really a very tight budget. So uh, I'm, I, I'm just pleased with uh, what you produced and excited to move forward and looking at things in uh, terms of more of a watershed approach. Uh, I think it'll, it'll serve the public well. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a couple of questions and a few comments. Um, I did was I was curious what is the the thought process behind having a smaller fee with a larger lot? That's an interesting question, and I'll take a um, that is somewhat of a relic of of his, our historical rate structure. The thought process is that a larger lot. Um, the stormwater that would be generated could be managed by the additional acreage that of open space that a larger lot could have. However, we are um, encouraging us to look into that and see if we if we want to still keep that tiered approach and a reduction for larger lots versus having a uniform fee, because having a larger lot also means you can build a larger home, you can build a shop, you can have ADUs, you can have. Um, a driveway and a concrete pad. And so we recognize that it's an important equity consideration. So I appreciate you raising that because we think um, it could benefit from some potential updating. Just, yeah. just to add to that answer, being in the rural area, uh, we, we're paying the lowest amount because we have 29 acres and we're on a corner. So we have about uh, 1,500 of road that surrounds our property, and we're treating all of the runoff from those roads. So I think some of those larger lots actually are providing a stormwater service, and we don't mind paying the, the, the small amount that we pay. And I would just I appreciate looking into this because there are, you know, trying to capture the average situation because every individual property is different. There are some that are 
that are helping mitigate. There are some that are contributing to our required mitigation. Um, so that's very challenging. But I do think, yes, uh, you know, that does need to be looked at because I think at a certain point in acreage, you probably end up with a situation where there's very little runoff from the property, but your road in front of your property increases the larger your parcel is typically anyway, not always, but typically. And so there are further impacts. So appreciate looking into that. Um, I want to say thank you for your great work. You guys really are an amazing team. And uh, kind of where I'm looking at this, I'm looking at it from several different ways. One is I would love to grant everything because I think that it is all needed. Um, where, I'm, where I'm struggling is unfortunately we haven't been, we've, we've as county government not labeling anybody specifically at fault. It could be the council, it could be staff, it could be everybody, combination of things. But you know, we haven't raised the rates and we have gone backwards and we're in a deficit situation and it's it, it we have to think about the fairness of how quickly we dig ourselves out of that hole. Um, to me it's it can be irresponsible to just dump the whole load on everybody at the same time, especially in this particular environment where everybody's suffering from increased cost to everything. Um, and I also need to, I think it's, it, it is, uh, I'm not ready to give direction yet because some numbers need to be there so that we can understand those, those impacts. You know, we, in December we had a really difficult conversation about the 1% increase and, and that meant about, I think it was $7 a year, you know, and I think that the likely what we're looking at here is significantly more than that. And even though it's a fee, it still really is a tax. I mean, there really is not much of a difference between those two. So, um, you know, we're going to have to strike that balance somewhere. Uh, you know, I'm absolutely at the point where we have to come to the mandated that we have to do those. And and I would, I think it's worthwhile to looking into some of those additional things. I think it, we owe it to the community to stay on top of this. We should have a good understanding of our capital needs and our replacement costs because it is derelict of duty not to, you know, because then we end up with these really large expenses. So somewhere in there, we're going to have to strike that balance between the burden to the taxpayer, the ratepayer, um, and what we really need and how we can best fill that deficit that we have built over the past decade or so. So really appreciate this work, and I look forward to more conversation and information on it. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. That was really well said, and I, I agree with everything that you stated. I think it's really important that um, if there is potential for a rate increase that we make sure it's manageable and that we're able to smooth it out over time and, and not have too much of an impact on, on our residents in Clark County. Any other comments, questions? I will make a comment. Um, thank you, Devin and team for um, explaining all that information and flushing it out. Um, there is a lot to clean water, that is for sure. Um, and I do appreciate further conversation because we um, have some issues with current inflation rates at the moment. So um, we need things to be manageable for, for our county constituents and um, so I appreciate all this information. Look forward to more conversation related to this. Um, I've been taking notes and um, so more to come on that. Councilor Bowerman, any questions? I would have many if we had not had the opportunity for very extensive one-on-ones yesterday. <clears throat> that was a helpful time and uh, uh, cuts down by hours, I'm sure, on the time that is needed today. Um, I, I would just encourage the public to um, continue to look at the slides that were provided today, and they are no doubt online, right? And uh, would um, 
give you the opportunity to kind of refresh on this until it is in your mind uh, when we discuss the rates and uh, have it um, individualized. Thank you, Councillor Bowerman. All right, I know that we have some other things coming up. Um, if there's no further questions, we have concluded the work session and therefore we are adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.